Well guys, what we have here is an Ertl farm toy, a case tractor. It is a 1030 Comfort King. And as you can see, it's a little worse for wear. Now I have great memories of this tractor. You see, it stayed up in the attic of our garage. And I would think about it every now and then, and I would climb up there, and I would see it in this condition, and I would be sad, so I'd leave it there, and then I'd climb down until the next time. But I always wished it was fixed up, and I was able to play with it. Um, don't know where we ever got it, or when. Probably a garage sale, something like that. And I can see the the hitch has been fixed on, customized. The cast hitch has been broken off, so we'll have to fix that. Steering wheel's broken. Fenders are all smashed. Someone probably stood on it like a skateboard. Front wheels are gone. Rear axle is completely bent. So what I'm going to do, um, I already got new front tires, steering wheel, decal sheet. I want it as close to the original paint as possible. And if you go to a farm and ranch store, they usually sell uh, quartz gallons or spray paint of original tractor colors for guys restoring old tractors. So I picked up the flambeau red, because case is nothing if not class, and power white. And we will make that spray paint look good by the time we're done. And also primer. So what I need to do now is finish tearing it down the rest of the way. So I can get my rivet sizes. Like this, this is a big old rivet here. Rivets in the steering. And what I need to do for the rear axle. Rear tires are a bit chopped up. I may keep them. I'll probably end up keeping them, but we'll see by the end what we do. So let's get to taking this thing apart. Okay, we're going to center punch the rear axle. Get this as close as I can.
All right, after a little bit of carnage, here we have all our parts. Two pieces I am not disassembling are the steering knuckles. I don't want to get into figuring out how to replace that pin in there. I would suppose either the steering knuckle had its own rivet head molded to it and they peened it over or the knuckle is hollow and they drove a blind rivet down into a hole but I, I'm not going to find out. It'll um, clean up and paint just fine how it is. Got all my rivets so I can get the size, the axle. So I will get those ordered and otherwise we're ready to start sandblasting, painting, straightening, all the fun stuff. Okay buddy, while I get these cleaned up, why don't you go to the salvage yard and find some parts for us. Buddy. Hey. Now, now, come on. Now get going. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, very good. Thanks, buddy. Alright, so what I've got going on here, boy it looks impressive doesn't it? I've got my tractor body or frame or chassis or block or whatever obviously held down and leveled. That came out. Um, and my hitch piece, my hitch half, held down by sticky tack. The only problem is I don't know what's going to happen when I heat sticky tack to 350 degrees, but we'll find out. I wish I had some modeling clay or something. Anyway, what I'm going to be using is Muggy Welds, MuggyWeld.com. Uh, they're Super Alloy 1 low temp solder for pot metal for almost any um, metal, two dissimilar metals you want to join together you can. Repairing uh, pits and pot metal like old car emblems, um, unknown properties of die cast metals, um, it's just, it solders it all together. So I'm going to put on the special flux that comes with it and what I'll be looking for you can dip the rod in this and use the rod to apply the flux, but I'm going to make sure I get some in there. And it should turn um, a light brown when it's ready, when the temperature's ready. I have 
never done this before with this product so this will be fun Brown. Like I said, I was trying to use Super Alloy 1, and it just wasn't soldering. I could get it to stick, but it wouldn't hold. And if you go back to the instructions, it says it's not suitable for diamond plate aluminum or cast aluminum, which this certainly is cast aluminum. So completely my fault. They, they have all this information on their website, Muggy Weld does, and I just didn't go through it. I thought, hey, you can solder aluminum, I'm buying it. And this is the result. <laughs> then for fun, I tried silver soldering it, and silver solder just runs right off like water. And um, so I'm left re-sandblasting it, clean it all up, and I'm just gonna have to epoxy it. Um, they do say get Super Alloy 5, so they have a product I could use on this, but by the time I spend $60 on a kit, plus another 15 for shipping, um, I don't wanna dump another $75 into a little tractor restoration. So this is how we learn. It's my fault completely. I didn't read through all the information on the website before I bought this, but uh, epoxy should hold it, and for our purposes, it'll look fine on the shelf. And uh, by the way, I was lucky enough to score original style, style tires. They are not missing huge chunks out of the out of the tread, which is awesome. The plastic is a whole lot cleaner, and this is all checked, and this is nice and smooth and clean, so I think we'll just clean those up. And then these are a much newer style rim, and you can just see they're plain old plastic, molded plastic tires with an orange insert. So that's why I bought this old International. I wanted these rims which would be the original style to this and then I've got some thicker tires that sh these should press into so we'll paint those and so that's the story on that Now unfortunately, bending that back, the metal was fatigued and it cracked, but that's no big deal. We'll just JB weld it and hopefully we can clean it up good enough in the corner.
going to try to be smart about this. More than likely, I'll just end up being a nudnik. It's just not happening, folks. It is just not happening. I've tried soldering it, I've tried JB welding it, and I've tried regular epoxying it, and the fact is it's just too thin. There is not enough surface material for the uh, the torque you can put on there. You know, I can't even sand it without it falling off. So we are gonna move on and accept the fact that it is what it is. The history of this little thing is that some kid played with it till the hitch fell off and then his dad probably had to replace it and we're just gonna run with it if you can't accept the bad things that have happened in the past you will never move on into the future we are going to reuse this I will probably just rivet it in place and I think what I'm gonna do I don't you know we don't need that much drop I mean that hitch is almost dragging on the on the ground so I think I'm gonna take the bend out of it and then probably shorten it up just a touch and then we'll reuse the hitch and move on with our lives because frankly I'm tired of messing around with it
All right, we're jammed in the corner back here. We've got simple green and hot water. We're going to clean these wheels up and also hopefully soften the tires on the old white rims, and that'll help us get those off a little easier. So we will let it go. That worked really well. Okay, I'm going to go rinse these off. And we're going to scuff these up a little bit and paint them. I'm just going to take some odd, 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 quadruple odd, four odd, four zeros, whatever. Some of the finest steel wool you can buy, basically, and rub these up with it. Water. All right, I've got some water with a drop of soap in it. Some 400 grit sandpaper and my four zip steel wool. What I'm going to use the steel wool on is the front here just getting to the the uh, grill and just smooth that out. I'm not overly concerned about what gets primer completely taken off. This never would have had primer on it anyway from the factory. I'm mainly more concerned about after sandblasting getting this a smooth surface again. I'm basically just using primer as filler, a very thin filler. But Ertl would have, you know, that's bare aluminum and they would have just painted right over that with their top coat. And so that's really what I'm just trying to get to. Get these. That's all I'm going to do with the steel wool, so I'm going to get this out of here. So I have a little bit of a difficulty when it comes to the rivets. These two little guys I got on eBay and somebody was nice enough to put a little kit together for restoring like Tonka trucks. 
And so I went ahead and bought that so I would have kind of an assortment and it has the right sizes in there. So that's no problem. Then the next three sizes, two or three sizes here, I can find these, but they're all, everything is an eighth inch rivet, semi-tubular, which means there's a cavity on the end that folds over when you clamp it down. Um, I can find these five, but I would have to order three different sizes, and you basically have to order a hundred rivets, no matter what size you want. So I'd probably be spending, you know, a good 15 bucks each size plus shipping. Not too interested in that. I could do it, but not too interested. The main difficulty is in this longest inch and a half one. Can't find it in semi-tubular. I can find it in the solid rivet, and I could drill out the end. But at that point, why not make your own? So we're just going to avoid all that and make our own anyway. I got a box, a $2 box of 11 gauge nails. 11 gauge is just under an eighth of an inch. So hopefully that'll work. We're going to go to the lathe and turn down some rivets. Well, there we are. Slowly, but uncertainly, I came to the definite conclusion I didn't need to make all the rivets from scratch. Those that I could uh, cut down that were long enough for other purposes. I uh, reused the original rivets and just drill new holes on the lathe. But I did end up making the three longest ones that I needed from scratch. So, there we go. Now, if you're asking yourself, why did you paint it before you put it together? <laughs> what do I look like? An Ertl expert?
Ui. How do these match? Pretty good. That color is pretty good. Now what a guy did for the axle, I couldn't find a replacement axle and I was thinking about once again making a new one with a nail, um, but I thought I'd play around with this one, original one, a little longer and I ended up drilling and tapping out thread, um, I can't remember, I think it's 830 seconds and if you go to your hardware store you can find these things forget what they're called at the moment, binding posts or something. Anyway, it's just something you can hold from each end, kind of like the axle does, only you can unscrew it. And actually on these, you could make an entire axle out of these. Um, you can buy sections at different lengths and just keep screwing them together, kind of like a uh, rifle cleaning rod. And then at the other end just put the screw. So I turned this down the same diameter as the head, excuse, as this head, and the only obvious defect there is that you have a screw slot, but uh, that's what we're going to do for now, and you could put um, a little thread lock, a little blue thread locker on there or something. I'm going to leave it for the moment. I'm going to put the original side on the left side, just kind of how you, however you want to view it yourself, I guess. Make sure you have the tractor tread going in the correct direction. We'll only pinch for a second.
Ooh. Take two. Okay, well there we go. That's it. I'm done. I'm calling it quits. What do you think? Hey, give me your opinions, give me your comments, give me your questions, um, whatever you want to do. Overall, I am pretty happy with it, how it turned out. I think the paint turned out pretty good for being spray paint. Um, along those lines, I actually thought the decals were water slide. I hadn't even taken them out of the package until it was time to do them. And uh, lo and behold, they were just stick on. Otherwise, if they had been water slide, I would have uh, clear coated over them just to make sure they stay. The two big issues, obviously, on this restoration were the rivets and the hitch. Still not happy 100% with how the nails worked. Um, really need a softer metal or a softer uh, steel product than a nail. And maybe you could do some annealing or something on the nails and uh, get them to work a little better. I got them to work, but they tended to want to split instead of just flare out real nice. So some experimenting could be done with that. It's, you know the uh what what makes the difference on that is just how much money you want to put into it and how much time you want to put into it and uh same with the hitch um i had already spent like i said 75 dollars mistakenly buying the wrong thing and i wasn't going to spend the same amount of money again um kind of a letdown when making a video uh <laughs> to be honest but it is what it is and that's that's how I've known this tractor my whole life, is with that uh, that uh, hitch that was screwed on there. So, that's how it's going to stay for now. But otherwise, looks great in my opinion. Um, about this International, if any of you were, might have been upset that I cut it apart and stole parts off of it, well, the casting was broke. Steering wheels broke. I bought it used off of eBay obviously used um, in this condition and why not use one to make another bad one good you know so that was the story on that oh and what's the deal with buddy well buddy I wanted to try a stop motion just for fun on this project I don't know why and I thought of Ertl um, when I was a little kid my oldest brother had a toy it was Jimbo Billy Bob's country stampede or something like that i'll put a picture here of it basically he was a country singer with a 18 wheeler like a peterbilt for some reason i don't know if he like a jerry reed kind of knockoff thing i don't know anyway i wanted to find that figurine of jimbo billy bob and do a stop motion with this because it was an Ertl product well we couldn't find him at least, well, I, okay, I asked my mom and she had no idea, I'll be honest. I saw this guy at an antique store, he's a Buddy L product actually, from the 60s. Looks a lot like Mick Dundee, but anyway. So I bought him, his wires are all broken, he doesn't stand for a hill of beans, it was incredibly difficult. I think his legs are two different lengths. Uh, it was just silly, I'm, I apologize if it was annoying. But uh, hopefully I got it out of my system. So that's the story on that. And for now, me and Buddy are going to say adios. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.